Three parts to true forgiveness. The first part, humble yourself and admit you've done wrong. Second part to true forgiveness is try to make it right. Um, there's a guy in the Bible, his name is Zacchaeus, and he's identified in the Bible as a chief tax collector. Now, in our culture, we don't understand the significance of that statement. If I were to put it into Tucson English, Zacchaeus was head of the bloods, chief pimp, gangbanger, and mafia dude. Okay? You see, he wasn't an IRS guy. That's not what he's saying. Tax collectors in those days were the pariah of everyone's existence. Even, I mean, our IRS guys are nice compared to them. Here's an IRS guy back in Jesus' day. You go to the local governor, Pilate, or whoever's in charge, maybe the senator, and you say, you know what? I want the privilege of collecting taxes in this district, so I'll give you 2,000 pounds of gold a year for the privilege of collecting taxes in this district. Somebody else comes up and says, I'll give you 2,500. Somebody else comes up, I'll give you 3,000. They sell it to the highest bidder. The highest bidder. So now this guy's got to come up with 3,000 pounds of gold. Where does he get it from? You. He gets it from you. And then after that, he gets the profit. So he goes to the highest bidder, and then he's got to extort that money, and then he's got to get more for his own benefit. And I'm sure he's going to just take a little. Now, Rome was the taxing authority. And it was Jews who were going to the Romans for the privilege of fleecing their own people. So how do you think their people felt about those people? Traitors, worse than traitors, turncoats, nasty. They hated them. If you wanted to call somebody, you wanted to insult somebody, you called them a tax collector. That was, that, those were fighting words. All right? So he's introduced in the New Testament as Zacchaeus, the chief tax collector. So you put yourself in the, oh man, okay, so this, this scum bucket is now in the story. You with me? And he hears about Jesus, and Jesus is coming through town. Now, Jesus was extremely famous. Where he went, crowds gathered. He was extremely famous, as you would be if you could touch people and heal them. So he hears Jesus is coming through town. Zacchaeus is a short little guy. He can't see. So he runs up ahead to where he's going to head, and he goes up into a tree. And he says, I got a good view here. Guy got no dignity whatsoever. <laughs> good man for that. Jesus gets up to the tree, and he stops. He says, Zacchaeus. And I'm thinking, how does he know his name? That's what messiahs do. <laughs> he says, come on down out of that tree. I'm staying at your house today. And immediately, all the righteous and holy people started grumbling. Oh, he's going to go stay at a tax collector's house? <gasps> yeah. Jesus could see a good heart. That guy's heart was ready to change. All those people who got scandalized, not so much. So he goes to the guy's house. Pick up the story there. All the people saw it. They started grumbling. I'm in uh, Luke chapter 19. This man has gone as a guest to the home of a sinner. Now here's the home of the sinner. Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Listen, sir, I will give half my belongings to the poor. And if I've cheated anyone, I'll pay back four times as much. Jesus said to him, salvation has come to this house today. This man changed. He changed so much that he became a 50% tither. I don't know an elder in town who'll do that. How's that for a heart? He gave his heart to God so much so that on the spot he offered half of his possessions. On the spot. And he said, not only that, but if I've wronged anybody, I'll give them four times the amount I've wronged them. Four times the amount. You know, the law of Moses required 20% more. Listen to this. It's from Leviticus chapter 6. You have sinned if you rob or cheat someone, if you keep back money or valuables left in your care, or if you find something and claim not to have it. No, I never saw it. It's not mine. When this happens, you must return what doesn't belong to you and pay the owner a fine of 20%. Zacchaeus is saying, 20 shmeni, I'm giving you four times. That bad chief tax collector just became a man of God and a supporter of the kingdom. To 
If David was up here today and he said, you know what, for truth, forgiveness, you really need to humble yourself and admit you've done wrong. If Zacchaeus was up here today, I know what he'd say, just don't tell me you're sorry, try to make it right. Zacchaeus said, I will give four times to make it right. Only required 20%, I know. Imagine, let's just say you had a business deal with somebody. And you had a disagreement. Now you've looked back at it a couple years later and you realize you did wrong. You cheated your partner. It happens all the time. And now you feel bad about it and you want to go and apologize. Go, but go with a check. <laughs> Say, you know what? I stole $1,000 from our business. I, I did wrong. I justified it at the time, but now that I look back, I realize I'm just a thief. And I'm very, very sorry. I don't know if you can forgive me. I don't know if I was in your shoes if I could forgive you, but I did wrong and I'm sorry. Here's a check and here's interest. Here's a check for $1,500. Here's a check for $2,000. Here's a check for $3,000. Whether you forgive me or not, that's between you and God. I hope you can find it in your heart to forgive me. But here's the money I owe you. How hard is it going to be to forgive that guy? Compare that to the guy that says, yeah, man, I, I messed up. <laughs> Only human. You see? Humble yourself, admit you've done wrong, and bring a check. You know, husbands and wives will often wrong one another. You live close with somebody for many years, you can't help but do wrong and hurt somebody's feelings or do something stupid or selfish. And then when that happens, you get into the doghouse. So how do you get out of the doghouse? I'm here today to tell you how to get out of the doghouse. Let's take a look at the video.